Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a science fiction horror film, The Faculty. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie starts with a football coach, shouting at the players about the practice, and he is quite grumpy. He even flips the bench upside down. Also the water from the field sprinkler promptly rushes. Afterward, he starts dealing with it, when an unknown figure gets close to him. Later that day, the teachers stay till dark in the faculty lounge to discuss the lack of funds. Everyone says their farewell, apart from the principal who comes back for her keys. Right then, a distant door opens, when she opens a drawer to reach for the keys. To her surprise, the coach appears out of nowhere. The freaky man compliments the principal, but she accuses him of drinking instead. The coach doesn't seem to be in the right state of mind now. Absent-mindedly, he doesn't let the principal go away, but asks her for a pencil instead. She has no choice, but to give him what he wants, to end the conversation. She wants to get out of the place as soon as possible. She waits for the coach to leave, but he remains in his position. He even compliments her again. This is the principal's cue to warn him that harassment has a fine line. She is about to leave, when the man stabs her with a pencil, puncturing her hand. I've always wanted to do that, he sternly says. The poor principal helplessly screams, as she scratches his face with her fingernails. She will do everything to escape with her life on the run. Hope gathers up in her system, when the drama teacher appears outside because she forgets her grade book. The principal pleads to give her the keys, which the drama teacher claims she doesn't have. The key is in the office, so the principal gobbles her fear up, and runs to the room to get it. The coach tries to stop her, but the principal hides in a corner, then attacks the coach, smashing a jar on his head, seizing the key set, and grabbing scissors for a weapon. She succeeds, but the coach is tailing her, and is on his way to get her. With determination, she rushes towards the door. The principal thought that she was finally safe. However, the drama teacher emotionlessly stabs her, with the scissors she dropped when she tried to escape from the coach. It causes her death. Then, the drama teacher utters, I've always wanted to do that. Another day comes for the small campus of Harrington High. Short guy, Casey, is getting bullied like usual. On the other hand, Stokely is wearing her stern attitude and emo looks, whereas her friend Layla, a popular sharp-witted cheerleader, is talking to other girls, while her varsity boyfriend Stan is with the other players. An uneasy newbie Mary Beth can be seen wandering around. No one can forget about Zeke, a notorious repeater who sells stimulants. Meanwhile, the teachers are having a conversation when someone brings out the principal's name. No one seems to know her whereabouts. The coach can be seen chugging down cups after cups of water, which is unusual. He and the drama teacher are acting weird. During lunch, Mary Beth, Stokely, and Delilah introduce themselves to each other. The aloof Stokely doesn't want to engage herself with anyone, whereas the clumsy short guy is alone on the bleachers, silently eating his lunch. Once done, he starts walking on the field, when something lying on the ground catches his attention. He picks it up without a second thought. It's a foreign object he's never seen before. The coach approaches Casey, and tells him to get out of the way, and that's what he does. He shows the thing to their science teacher. This teacher examines it under a microscope. A certain mesozoan only exists in the kidney of certain squid and octopi, a sea-dwelling organism, says his verdict. Everyone in the class is intrigued to look, when Stokely hits the glass of water when a guy makes fun of her. It's not that she does that on purpose, but she just really hates it, when her classmates mock her or make fun of her. This results in the foreign object moving, when it gets in contact with water. The teacher finds it fascinating, so he submerges it in the aquarium. To everyone's surprise, it swims, stretching its weird strings like hairs or legs. Their science teacher believes that it could be an interesting species to examine, he touches it when it replicates into two, and even bites his forefinger with its sharp teeth. Instead of examining the species by himself, the science teacher should have used a tool to hold it with not his bare hands. Who knows what the foreign organism could do to him. Concurrently, at the school pool, the coach is still acting unusually. He is acting far from his usual grumpy self, to say the least. Stan then goes to the shower room to wash up. Minutes after that, he is completely startled to see Mrs. Brummel in the men's shower room trying to rip her clothes off, because she cannot breathe. Casey witnesses the scenario, but Stan pushes him away. He tries to touch Mrs. Brummel, but oddly enough, its body starts to melt like a candle and crumble. This is indeed freakish, so whoever witnesses this would have felt uncomfortable and scared. The absurdities are starting to form along the way. 
Stan immediately informs the drama teacher about what happened. But the teacher just gives him a foolish reason that Mrs. Brummel has cancer, and is under medication. Stan seems unbothered about the unrealistic claim, whereas Casey is starting to get curious about the horror that's occurring in the school. As he stares outside the window, he can see the coach on the field with crossed arms, staring directly at him. What's weirder is that the coach is standing in the middle of the field, soaked with sprinkler spritzing water all over. Casey becomes invested in the strange creature he found on the field. He confronts Delilah about it, so they go to the faculty lounge to snoop around and find any evidence for a story. They hide inside a file room at once, when they hear two people approaching. The coach and the drama teacher enter the room. The two are in the middle of a converse of shady conversation about Mrs. Brummel, and as regards the commutation of the entire faculty, which will soon be followed by the student, when Miss Harper barges in the room for a drink. The coach pushes her to the door, then pins her to the couch. Casey and Delilah witness the coach and the drama teacher force one of the parasites into the ear of the school nurse. Delilah starts to panic, to the point that she does not realize what's behind her, until it falls with her on the floor. Casey instantly covers her mouth. They both try to break free, when the coach opens the door. Subsequently, the police arrive at the rescue, but the case is dismissed because Casey's claims are discredited by the principal. The next morning everyone in the school starts acting strange. Not only the teachers this time, but also the students are starting to look lost, and are always on the hunt for drinking water. The school looks busier than ever, with everyone acting like a robot being controlled by whatever it is. Stokely is starting to find this dubious. While everything is in a chaotic mess, Casey and Stokely are discussing the weird things happening on their campus. They formulate a hunt or conspiracy that this may be caused by an alien invasion. They disclose this idea to Delilah and Stan, while looking for the strange creature in their science teacher aquarium, but it's nowhere to be found. Zeke and Mary Beth overhear the conversation while making out in a room, not so far away from their science teacher. They join the group, thus teasing them about their peculiar scheme. The science teacher suddenly confronts them, but becomes defensive, and attempts to infect them, as soon as Zeke tries to leave the room. He cuts off Furlong's fingers, and it crawls down to the floor. Due to the will to survive and the resistance to not get infected, Zeke injects his homemade drugs into Furlong's eye, killing him. This brings a surge of ideas inside their heads. They know now how to eliminate these aliens, they have a plan. Zeke drives them to his place, where they experiment on Casey's specimen, which he brings with him as proof from their science teacher. They attempt to make it work in a mouse Zeke has. They discover that it is a mind-controlling parasite, which attaches itself to a host, then controls it, and it is something greater like a leader, who is controlling it. Apart from that, they also find out that it needs water to survive, and can be killed by his drugs for it is a diuretic. However, they start to question and doubt each other at that point. They have no idea how to differentiate an infected human from those who are not. This decreases their trust for each other, obstructing their plan somehow. After deliberating, they all decide to take a hit of Zeke's drug, to figure out who among them are infected. Delilah and Marybeth are both hesitant to get stoned, but it turns out that Delilah is infected. She destroys Zeke's lab before running away. Well, Stokely follows her out, whilst targeting her with a gun and escapes. In this scene, the teenager holding a gun and being high, shows how liberated these teenagers are. This must have been a huge responsibility to put on teenagers' backs to save their school, which happens to be the breeding ground of alien domination. Acting on Casey's speculation that killing the queen alien would revert everyone to normal, the group returns to the school where their football team is playing a game, and infecting opposing players. They believe that the principal is the queen, so they convince her to sniff the drug. But she refuses to do so, leading to her death. These young minds are becoming killers to save their lives, and to get to the root of everything. Mary Beth pours the drug all over the principal, causing her body to liquefy. Stan volunteers to check if everything goes back to normal, but comes back infected instead. Zeke and Casey take the risk to go to Zeke's car to get more of Zeke's drugs. Casey distracts infected students away from Zeke, but Delilah approaches him inside a school bus. Casey gets out through the roof of the bus, still running away from a bunch of infected fellas. Meanwhile, Zeke encounters Miss Burke, who he defeats by throwing her away between crashes he recklessly pulls off. That doesn't seem to kill Miss Burke, because her head is still crawling with weird-looking legs underneath it. Her body got separated into two. Scared of what's in front of him, Zeke gets out of the area. Casey returns to the gym, where Marybeth reveals to Stokely that she is the queen. 
the two run away to the school swimming pool, where the alien catches Stokely's leg and gets injured and infected. Zeke arrives at the locker room, where Casey and Stokes are hiding. Soon after Stokely unveils herself infected, making Casey lock her up. Mary Beth manages to escape after telling Zeke how she forged the drug. She even seeks to seduce him to gain his trust, but Zeke does not waver. Mary Beth transforms back to the gory alien appearance, rendering Zeke unconscious by throwing him into a locker. She explains that she is taking over Earth, because her planet is dying and promises Casey a better life. Little does Mary Beth know, Casey is plotting a plan to defeat her. He takes the drug, and tricks the queen into following him into the retracting bleachers, trapping her and stabbing the drug in its eye. Casey almost gets infected, but comes back to normal once the queen runs out of breath. Stokely comes back to normal, whereas Zeke brings back to consciousness. The movie ends one month later. Everyone has returned to a normal and even better life for Casey and his friends. Stan and Stokes begin dating. Zeke takes Stan's place on the football team with Miss Burke on the bleachers, cheering for him. Needless to say, Casey and Delilah are a couple now, and have become local heroes. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.